here. Um, so thank you so much for joining us on our uh, June webinar, Save Energy, Save Money, with Karen. We are going to introduce her in just a moment. But in the meantime, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping details that are really helpful. So the first one is um, if you're having any difficulty hearing myself or a presenter, definitely check your volume first. Sometimes that's just a great rule of thumb. Make sure it's at an appropriate level for your um, listening uh, capabilities. And then second is um, closing other programs. So this helps to increase your connectivity and doesn't kind of drag on um, that connection that you have um, to stream this webinar. If you are experiencing anything more severe, go ahead and log out and re-log in. Sometimes just resetting that way is the most beneficial and helpful. And as a reminder, we are recording this session, so we will make this available to everyone um, that has registered for this webinar right after. Um, usually takes about 24 to 48 hours to process, and we will send it out via email. And um, thank you again for joining us. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Karen. Karen Massey is SWEEPS Arizona Program Associate, where she provides support across SWEEPS programmatic areas and work on demand side management, building energy codes, electric vehicles, as well as utility regulatory processes. So before joining the Southwest Energy Efficiency Project or SWEEP, Karen worked with the Laboratory of Biological Invasions in Concepcion in Chile, researching carbon credit projects in the forestry category and determining their successes in restoring native land in southern and central Chile. So I am going to um, turn it over to her, but just wanted to thank her for her time and her expertise in talking to us about living in the desert, how to save energy as well as money. It's hot outside, so we thought that this would be the perfect topic for June. And without further ado, Karen, please take it away. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kendall. And good morning, everyone. I'm so incredibly excited to be here today, and I hope that the information you get from this webinar is helpful and informative for you. So let's just dive right into saving energy and money, the tips and tricks tricks for reaping the benefits of energy efficiency. And like Kendall mentioned, um, here's a little bit of information about my background. I am SWEEPS Arizona Program Associate, so I focus on all the different um, energy efficiency programs that utilities offer, as well as the building energy codes that we work with primarily at the municipal and local level and trying to get them adopted across the state as well as policies around clean transportation and electric vehicles. And here's a little more information about SWEEP, the Southwest Energy Efficiency Project. SWEEP is a public interest organization that promotes greater energy efficiency and clean transportation throughout the Southwest region. So we have uh, focus areas in Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. So when it comes to energy efficiency policies, a lot of the different policies that are going to work across the country are very unique to the region of the United States. And that's really dependent on the climate zone and the type of weather that each of the states um, have every single day. So the different types of energy efficiency recommendations and other energy policies that organizations might work on will really vary across the regions. So we focus on the energy efficiency appliances, technology, and policies and rebates that really work well in this more desert, high desert, forested, um, different types of climate zones that you see across the Southwest region. And just here's a quick agenda for the webinar today and all the different information I will be covering. So our webinar has four sections in which I will go through the, the basic benefits of energy efficiency and how energy efficiency can be a really effective tool for your business, as well as the programs that each of the electric and gas utilities in Arizona offers and how you can really maximize the benefits of those programs. And I'll try to leave at least 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the webinar today for any questions um, and give you any answers to those questions. And we can just have a dialogue on anything that might come to top of the mind for you. 
All right, so let's dive right into Energy Efficiency 101 and the amazing benefits that it can offer your business. But first, a polling question. Now, if any of you who has access to the chat box, if you'd like to get ready to answer this question for me. So on average, how much energy does business in Arizona consume? Do you just want to give any guesses that you might have in kilowatt hours or just throw out a number out there if you have any ideas or thoughts. Okay, we have a guess of 180 kilowatts per hour. Someone says 300. Any other guesses? Going once, going twice, and all right, here's the answer. So this might be shocking to some of you, but depending on the size of your enterprise and your business, your energy use is going to be roughly 8,000 kilowatt per hour per month, which is roughly $772 per month. And some, to some of you, that might be a really large number and very surprising. And to some of you, depending on the size of your business, that might be a fairly typical month for you. But these costs can really start to add up quickly every month. And also depending on the fluctuations and the seasons, and if we have a really hot day or something like that that's abnormal, this can really drive up your business costs. So this is definitely something to keep in mind about your business operations. So, and, and truly, energy efficiency is a cost-effective tool that you can use for your business. It is really efficient, and energy efficiency is efficient, <laughs> and it helps to decrease operating costs. So these are your costs that you have that might be variable on a month-to-month -month basis and then on an annual-to-annual -annual basis. And also, it creates a healthier work environment for your employees. When we're thinking about things such as uh, building energy codes, with each different code cycle that's adopted by cities and municipalities, county level, and at the state level, these codes get more and more efficient, which requires our appliances that we use to get more efficient, which creates you know, better air quality and other factors that create a much healthier and more comfortable work environment for our employees in the state. And then also kind of looking out um, and expanding to the state level, Energy efficiency has created more than 40,000 family wage earning jobs across our state. And this is also including more than 28,000 jobs in the Phoenix area alone. And on the map on the right here, you can see the number of energy efficiency workers per 1,000 workers in the labor force by county in Arizona. And as you can see, Maricopa County um, is one of the most popular in terms of energy efficiency, but you can really see energy efficiency having a major impact across the state and at a truly low cost, which is really beneficial for businesses at all different scales. And from 2010 through 2017, for every $1 of ratepayer money that the utilities invest in energy efficiency in Arizona has returned more than $3, close to $4 in benefits to all ratepayers. So these are things like economic benefits, better air quality benefits, and uh, a downward pressure on rates by lowering your electric bills every month for reduced energy use. So these are all, are all major benefits that you can reap right now by taking appropriate measures and steps in order to actually realizing these benefits. And also, energy efficiency programs are truly the lowest cost option available. And when compared to other options, um, when utilities look at other energy options in order to power energy across the state, efficiency costs four to three times less. So anything we we're thinking about um, different, you know, let's say different power plants that a utility might want to invest in, um, really the lowest cost option is the energy that you actually do not use. So it's a really important tool to lowering our, all of our overall costs. Great, so now let's, let's expand this vision a little bit and look at Arizona's energy consumption. So by 2017, looking at the end use sectors of energy consumption across the state, residential and commercial are the largest energy consumption categories, closely followed by transportation. 
So there are really a lot of major opportunities to reduce that brownish area right now, which is where most of you would probably fit depending on your type of business. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to decrease that energy consumption. And then now we're going to expand. So we're taking that, that brown uh, section of this pie chart right here and expanding it and looking at energy use in all commercial facilities. And according to a 2012 commercial building energy consumption survey, that equivalent use of energy, so that 6,963 trillion BTU number right there, that's equivalent to an average annual usage of more than 97,000 kilowatts per hour per commercial building. This is a ton of energy that's being consumed. And a lot of this different energy usage you can see is from lighting, from heating, and from cooling. So there's a lot of opportunities in order to reduce that amount. And you might be curious about this other category that you can see here. And a lot of this, a lot of the energy consumption in the other category belongs to things like plugging that uses a, some type of a plug to charge. So anything from your computers, phones, to other handheld devices, as well as surge protectors. And despite, uh, except, um, including and adding on to some of the benefits of energy efficiency, there's a lot of things that it offers. Customers, the environment, utility systems, and the economy. So starting over on the environment side, uh, energy efficiency has a major opportunity to reduce air pollution, reduces water usage as well. And from the utility perspective, when we're trying to maintain a steady and reliable grid system, energy efficiency is helpful because it's less vulnerable to unexpected weather and central power, power plant failures. So it's really helpful and beneficial in that perspective. And also, when we're trying to make our utility system more resilient and less vulnerable to natural disasters and economic changes, energy efficiency is an incredible tool for that specifically. When we're also looking at the economy, energy efficiency helps to redirect bill savings to the local economy and helping to re, uh, kind of reinforce that family wage job economy that we get from energy efficiency. And also gives us a business competitive edge. So when we're looking at ways to really pump our dollars into local economy, efficiency and efficiency jobs is one of the best ways to do that. And then now looking at the customers, that's all of you, um, it really helps to lower bills right now. So it helps us in our monthly annual uh, consumption and our annual consumption, and also through the lifetime of the equipment that we install. And it also improves comfort and more control and understanding. Because when you have the ability to control your energy consumption and you have an understanding of how electricity is delivered to you and how you can manage that, you have much more control and freedom to take advantage of all these different offerings and ways to lower your bills. All right. So I wanted to give you all just a quick example of some different types of bills that you're going to see from each of the utilities in Arizona and some of the charges and maybe take some time to answer any questions that you might have regarding those bills or anything else that kind of comes up from today's webinar. So let's first start with those of you that are in Salt River uh, Projects service territory. There's a couple of different charges that you might see on your bill. So on the left here, this is a typical bill that you're going to see from a general service or commercial customer. So we can first start with some just basic um, definitions and information for you. I'm sure some of you might know some of this, but for those of you who might not, um, kilowatts per hour is a measure of energy use over a period of time. So this is how much energy you're using per day, per month, and typically this is what you're going to get on your electric bill. And also a monthly service charge is the fixed charges that covers the cost for utility for billing, collections, metering, customer service, and distribution facilities. And we have a couple other charges here, but the one I'd like to highlight is looking at the demand charge. This is typically a charge that sparks a lot of confusion for customers, as it's um, a little bit different from the total absolute energy 
um, the variable energy charge that you typically see on a bill. So the demand charge is basically um, a measurement or a charge you get from the demand you get per, or you use in 15 minute periods. So this is a measurement of the maximum amount of power required at one time measured in 15 minute periods. So while if you are on a demand rate, um, you can really save a lot of money if you're very careful about not meeting that peak amount of energy use per month. But sometimes you have to be very careful about when you're using your energy usage. So that, that's just something to be mindful of if you're on a demand rate. So you just make sure you're not hitting that peak and you can continue saving energy every month. And I'll go through a couple of the next slides a little bit quickly since we have a little bit more content to get through. But I do just want to highlight a couple of different charges that you're going to see on um, APS's bill. Something that you might see is a little bit different um, that is not called out on some of the other bills is there are charges for things like metering, so fixed fees for servicing and reading your meter, things like environmental benefit surcharges. So these are the costs of the utility bears for programs approved by the Arizona Corporation Commission, such as energy efficiency. So energy efficiency is showed on your bill, and this is a, a benefit to show essentially how much money that you're paying per month to go into these charges. And the great thing is a lot of these fees that you're going to see are much smaller than the variable energy charge that you'll see. So basically you'll have a chance to lower your bills because of the variable energy charge rate that you see. And also for those of you who are down south in Tucson, these are a couple of different charges that you'll see on your bill. And we're really excited to see the new rollout of TEP's um, electric bills. It's a very attractive bill. We're really excited to see some of the information that's included on it. So we hope it's helpful to you. So some of those different charges that you might see are things such as the power uh, purchase power and fuel adjustment charge. So this is a charge based on a per kilowatt hour adjustment. And this reflects any increases or decreases to TEP's base cost of purchase fuel and power. And also things like a lost fixed cost recovery. So these are the charges that offset the revenue TEP loses through the use of distributed generation, such as rooftop solar. So these are some of the costs that are embedded within your bill every month. And finally, we do have a gas bill for some of the different um, business owners on the webinar that do have a gas bill. So your natural gas usage is measured in therms, while an electric bill is measured in kilowatts per hour. So therms is a measurement of the amount of peat energy in natural gas, which is equivalent to 100,000 BTUs. So BTU is a British thermal unit, and this is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. So it's a very technical answer to basically saying that this is the measurement in which you, you're using your amount of natural gas per month. And they have very uh, similar charges that you might see on an electric bill, such as a basic service charge. And they also have one that's a little bit unique, the Department of Transportation Safety Surcharge. And this is a charge that recovers the cost of government uh, mandated pipeline safety programs to ensure that natural gas is delivered to you in a safe manner. So great. Let's pause for a moment and see if there's any questions that might have popped up in that first section before we dive into the essential components of efficiency for your business. So if you have any questions, uh, you can please type it now in the chat box. All right, I think we can just dive right into the middle section and why efficiency is an essential part of your business. So energy efficiency really helps business owners to reduce operating and maintenance costs. So when we're looking at different appliances that are available for um, business owners, there's a lot of different ways you can go about reducing your energy use and uh, cost-effective appliances that are available to you through different rebates from the utility. So one system I would like to highlight for you is a ductless heat, peat, uh, heat 
pump system, sorry, to reduce um, air conditioning and upgrade water heating. So this is a highly efficient uh, use piece of technology that you can utilize. And as you can see from the top right corner, you can see a diagram of heat pumps and how the, inform how the technology is used to retain heat and also to retain coolness. So you can use this as a way to uh, replace your conventional gas furnaces and also your conventional air conditioning systems. So the, these, these systems are highly efficient and they have dual purpose uses. So I highly recommend that you look into them for your business. And all the different ut electric utilities do offer different types of rebates for systems like this. So I definitely recommend you looking into some appliances like this. Also, double pane and triple pane windows are excellent um, energy efficiency tools that you can use to lower your costs. As you can see on the lower corner here, there is a diagram of a, a diagram of a dual pane window, and dual pane windows and triple pane windows are much better insulated when compared to a single pane window. They have thin metallic materials that help to retain heat and also to stay cool. So they're excellent for all different types of seasons and they're truly a great investment because a lot of airflow that comes in and out of your building is coming through the windows. So I highly recommend you looking at upgrading and investing in highly efficient windows for your business building. And as well as depending on the type of building that your business is in, um, looking at spray foam insulation is really great for Arizona. Spray foam is, has a much tighter seal. It's also very eco-friendly in terms of the material that you're using. And it also has a much longer lifespan. So you're truly going to reap the benefits of efficiency in a much longer time period because of the type of climate that we're in right now if you choose a spray foam insulation type. All right, and I did just want to have a small plug to a a uh, recent report that SWEEP uh, did to highlight the benefits of heat pumps and to see how truly cost-effective they are in, in new and in existing buildings. So right here you can see a table from our report, and I linked the report below for you. So this is looking at the savings of heat pump energy savings and the greenhouse gas emissions reduction benefits that you receive from them. So looking at then, so on um, the heat pump savings here, you can see in looking at all the different types of southwestern region cities, um, Phoenix has surprisingly a really high value for primary energy savings and greenhouse gas emissions reductions in new and in existing homes. So while in existing homes the energy savings is not as much for heat pump energy savings, um, the emissions are really still beneficial. And if that's something that as a business, if you have some kind of sustainability strategy, this is definitely something you might want to consider. And this is a type of technology you should really consider if you are building a new property or if you're looking at um, acquiring a new building. And heat pump water heaters specifically for water compared with natural gas heaters in Phoenix provide a simple payback of only 6.2 years on investment. So you really are getting a high return on your investment from heat pump water heaters when compared to natural gas water heaters. And fear not if you are in a building where you are just leasing it and you don't have any control over any types of control appliance upgrades and building enhancements, there are still a ton of ways that you can lower your monthly energy bills. So one huge category, like we saw in that commercial facilities pie chart earlier in the presentation, is from lighting. So just doing some quick things or some very small, small investments like replacing incandescent light bulbs with LEDs and using natural lighting as much as possible is really critical and a great way to lower your monthly usage, as well as heating and cooling. So some of the different rebates that the utilities offer are through smart programmable thermostats. And you can look into some of these upgrades and they're very cost effective. And once you get one of those, or even if you just rather just use the thermostat you have, you can simply just set the thermostat at a comfortable setting and just leave it. Because a lot of the time if you're 
changing the thermostat setting up and down all across the day. Your system has to work harder in order to meet that rising uh, uh, air conditioning cooling or and to set it back down again when you set it to a um, a temperature that doesn't require as much work. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at your temperature settings. And also um, conducting an initial DIY energy audit. This is a great way to just get you aware of the different areas in your building that might be um, a huge energy hog for you. And also office equipment, even using things like power strips is really essential and a really great way to reduce your plug loads. And also just avoiding leaving appliances plugged in is really beneficial as well. And um, something that's for energy use that you might not be aware of um, and something that actually creates a lot of energy use is just simply leaving your plugs plugged into the sockets. Um, and they are known as vampire loads. So essentially this is the phantom load that is still sucking in electricity use into the socket even when your appliances are not plugged or used right at the moment. So that's just something to keep in mind as well when you're leaving appliances plugged in. We recommend just taking the plug out so you can kind of continue reaping those energy conservation benefits. So looking back at that do-it-yourself energy audit, these just are a couple of things to keep in mind if you just want to walk around your building and see some ways that you can uh, increase your energy efficiency. So one, looking at um, sealed air leaks and see if there's any leaks around your building. And actually, just going quickly back to this um, diagram on the previous slide, you can just see here some common inflows and outflows of air throughout your building. So I would just keep this in mind in looking at some of the common ways that air seeps through your building and leaks out into the outside air. So just kind of consider that when you're doing your DIY energy audit. So also consider things like ventilation, um, checking your insulation, inspecting heating and cooling equipment, as well as lighting, and appliances and electronics. And so both SRP and APS provide an online building energy audit assessment that's really helpful for you to kind of conduct this do-it-yourself energy audit on your own. And it just helps you to think about all the different appliances and different areas of your building that might be wasting energy. And I did just want to give a quick shout out to some of the energy efficiency providers in Local First Arizona's network. There's three different ones that provide different services. Lighting Unlimited is a contractor that helps businesses retrofit lighting with large knowledge base on energy efficiency retrofits. And they're located in the Phoenix area. Energy Savings is our contractors also who help businesses understand their building energy needs and create action plans for better energy investments in the future. And they're located in Flagstaff. And GHLN are architects and engineers who help their clients design and transform the built environment in Tucson. So just keep some of these businesses in mind when you're looking for services. And um, also, there are plenty of other different energy auditors and building performance contractors in the Arizona, um, different Arizona hotspots, so Flagstaff, uh, Phoenix, Tucson, and some of the other greater um, regions across the state. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at greater investments. I highly recommend hiring a professional when you're looking at the different specifications and schematics that you need for your particular building. All right, so I'd like to pause for one more second and see if we have any other questions. All right. So seeing no questions, I think we'll go into the final section. So now I'd like to highlight some of the different energy efficiency offerings that Arizona's electric and gas utilities have to offer you. All right, so SRP, APS, and TEP offer commercial energy efficiency offerings that you can benefit from today. So before we dive into the specific technologies and different rebates that are available to you, I did want to make sure you understand the differences between custom programs as well as prescriptive programs. These are the two different types of commercial energy efficiency programs that um, the electric utilities can offer you. 
So custom programs are incentives based on energy saved in the first year of operation versus the entire lifetime of the appliance or technology you're installing. And in order to have some kind of custom offering, you would work with your utility to make sure that the program ideas are possible to pursue. So this is really good for if you're a certain business that has a, a really niche um, product or very specific energy needs for your building, maybe your indoor um, farm, maybe you're a brewery, or maybe you only operate your building once a week or something like that. There's a couple of different custom programs that maybe some of the rebates um, as promoted on the utility websites may not work for you. So you do have an opportunity to create a custom program that would fit your business needs. And these projects, before you start them and before you install the equipment, of course, will need to be pre-approved before they're ordered as well. So also prescriptive programs, these are the rebates that you would typically see or some of the, the traditional offerings that you would see offered from the different gas and electric utilities in Arizona. These are specific dollar amounts for completing qualifying energy efficiency measures. And these are for direct one-for-one -one replacements for commonly installed equipment. So for an example, if you're going to uh, replace your air conditioning system with that uh, heat pump system I was talking about, about earlier, that would be a one-for-one -one replacement. Or if you're looking at upgrading your energy hog refrigerator to a sleeker, more efficient model, that would be a one-for-one -one replacement. And also prescription for pro programs have a certain specification for equipment and appliances that are used um, on, kind of throughout the state and that are found on Arizona's utility websites. Um, and for example, so some of the different specifications are going to be things known as SEER ratings. So this might be a rating that you might see on a specific type of equipment, either at Home Depot or any of the other um, appliance stores that you might go to. So a SEER rating stands for a Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. And this is essentially the, the cooling, the the output of cool air that you get from an air conditioner over a typical cooling season, and that's divided by the energy consumed in watt hours. So this is basically how, how much cooling output you're getting from your air conditioning over time. So on um, the higher the SEER rating score, the better and more efficient your appliances are. So that's something also to keep in mind when you're looking at the specific upgrades and different rebates offered through each of the utilities. And maybe just quickly, I'd like to just go through a couple of the different um, other rebates outside specific appliances. If you're looking to construct a, a new building or start a new project from scratch, there are also um, new construction programs that are available, and as well as other um, very customized or specific programs for different types of businesses that are looking to start or to build a building um, from the bottom up. So also keep that in mind if you're looking for a new project. So I just want to highlight a couple of the prescriptive Southwest Gas commercial energy efficiency rebates. So some of the things that you can do or you, that you could utilize if you're a laundromat, they offer specific rebates for washer and dryers. Solar water heating rebates are available for $11.50 per therm for qualifying systems to residential customers. So maybe this is something to keep in mind as well if you're looking for something for your personal home. And also if you're a restaurant, barbecue, or, or any type of facility that uses restaurant equipment, they do offer very specific um, rebates for cooking equipment, such as this infrared charbroiler is available. So if you're any of the restaurants in town, please keep that in mind as a way to reduce your energy usage. As I know, uh, a lot of restaurants can really rack up really large energy bills just because of all the, the heating that takes place from cooking food. And also, uh, Southwest Gas does offer some custom rebates as well. So if you're in Southwest Gas territory and you do have a gas bill, uh, please contact them if you have any ideas for specific programs you would like to start for your business. And here, uh, here's just a listing of the different utility information on energy efficiency and the programs that each of the utilities in Arizona offers. And I trust that Local First Arizona will be sending out the slides as well as the recording to you. So you'll be able to click through any of these links and see all the specific rebates that are offered throughout each of these service territories of these utilities. 
So a lot of these utilities offer everything from refrigeration to industrialized motors to um, different lighting options as well as shade screens. And also if you're in TP's area, they also have a shade tree program to lower the, um, the heating within your building by planting trees. So there's a lot of really creative programs that you could take advantage of depending on your service territory that I highly recommend to you. All right, so I just want to offer the rest of the utility, uh, sorry, the rest of the uh, program, the webinar today for any questions that you might have um, or any thoughts or um, suggestions that you might have for energy efficiency programs. And also, I'd love to hear from all of you, what are some programs that you hope to get started? What are some ideas that maybe you might have had through this presentation that you would like to incorporate in your business? Um, please let me know now. So much, Karen, and um, it looks like we have somebody typing in right now. And I just wanted to again thank you for your time and your expertise. And I went ahead and I did uh, type in the chat box, but just to echo and um, let you all know, we will be sending out obviously an email with not only the recorded version of this, so you can refer back to it, but also those resources on that um, near last slide that Karen showed. We'll make sure to include that as well, so you have that right away at your fingertips. Okay, so it looks like uh, Helene is asking, are there any tools that businesses can use to measure the energy efficiency of their appliances? Yes, absolutely, that's an excellent question. So there are different energy meters that are available that you can use to measure how many kilowatts per hour are being utilized. And actually, a lot of, um, if you're trying to go the very DIY route and you really don't have any type of a budget to work with, um, you can actually check out different energy meters at various libraries throughout the state. So that's a great a free way to start looking at um, your energy consumption in your building and starting on that DIY energy audit. So I definitely recommend that as a, as a great starting point to measuring efficiency. All right, we'll leave it open here. Um, does anybody else have any questions before we close it out for the, the time being, as it were? Feel free to go ahead and type in any questions right there. Oh, I would also like to mention, so looking at some uh, different energy efficiency tools that you can use, there are a couple of tools from the Department of Energy that you can utilize. So basically, um, you type in the different model of your type of appliance that you have for your business, and uh, this website will give you kind of a one-for-one -one comparison looking at um, different appliances and what might be an acceptable upgrade for you. So I will make sure to link that in the presentation at a later time. Thanks so much, Karen. And I think we might be able to close it out right there. Um, I know that this was a lot of great information and you might um, come up with some questions later on. So again, in that follow-up email, um, I can make sure to include Karen in that conversation. So then if you do have any questions, I can make sure that you're connected right away. But thank you so much for everybody that joined us online today. And again, thank you, Karen, for the presentation. And um, we will be in touch very soon. And I hope everybody has a great rest of June. Um, something that I did want to mention to all of our businesses that are on the line right now, um, we are celebrating Independence Week coming up this Saturday through the following Sunday. So that's June 29th through July 7th. And this is just a great time to celebrate our local businesses. It's an annual campaign that we run where businesses that are members of ours can um, accept a 20% off golden coupon and you get to decide what that 20% off deal is. So if you would like to participate, I'll follow up with you um, as well, and I will go ahead and send out an email on that. And we also have a couple of great events coming up too. One of them in particular is the Arizona Good Food Expo. This is gonna be August 20th.
26th. So if you're a food buyer, are you a chef or um, you own a restaurant or you know somebody, or if you're a food producer of any kind or again know somebody, this is a great opportunity to connect with those that are um, in the industry and would like to make connections. So it's a wholesale marketplace for those connections. And again, that's August 26th. And then um, last but not least, we do have our rural policy forum. So anybody that's in the rural areas, I believe it's August 7th through 9th. And this is three days of roundtable discussions, keynote speakers, everything to talk about building solutions and great economies all across our state for the rural regions. So you've got a fantastic lineup, but I'll make sure to include all of that information in the follow up as well. All right, and with that, thank you again. Thank you, Karen, and we're gonna sign off. Everybody have a great day. We will see you next.